We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the raw food world. Man, I could already smell the energy of this spring just from being yes. like feet away from it, many feet away from it. The, the ions, ions right? right? So it's, it's ionically uh, strong here because this water is literally, but if you look around, like if we look around this house, there's no water. You don't see a big river coming off of this. You don't see a river pouring in. The water is coming out of that spot. It's bubbling up from the earth and it's bringing with it all kinds of frequencies and energies from in the earth. This is really different water than comes out of a filter or out of a tap or out of the sky when it rains. That water's been through the greatest filtration system on the earth. We call that the hydrological cycle. And it's been deep in the earth incubating. So it's just come up fresh and living and it's got forces in it that we'll discuss and we'll break down and make more scientific than they may sound like at first, but it essentially has forces in it that are not in other waters, and that's why we choose to come to places like this. Wow. I'm literally high right now just from being about 20 feet away from the spring. I, I sense the negative ions here. Yeah. So notice that the building has been made into a hexagon, so if you look at the structure, you see it's six-sided. Yeah. Water has a shape to it. We often don't think about it because water appears amorphous. We're used to liquid water. But water is a unique substance on the earth in that we find it here in all three phases of its matter, or all three phases of energy. We find it as a liquid, solid, and gas. There aren't other substances on the earth that are like that. We actually don't find you know, liquid metal, you know, liquid steel, gaseous steel, and solid steel. We only find solid steel. Right? Things are either frozen here as a solid, or they're a gas, or they're a liquid. Water is a unique substance. We find it in all three phases here. When we see it in its solid phase dropping out of the sky as crystals of snow, we become aware that water takes on a six-sided shape. Always six-sided. It's a hexagon. Why did they construct this as a hexagon over 120 years ago? Because 120 years ago there was understanding about water in the population that we kind of have lost. So they understood that in the same way that we find that creating hexagonally structured buildings for bees, beekeepers know a six-sided honeycomb better for bees. They'll produce better in a six-sided shape because six sides is how they structure their comb. That's a harmonious shape for them. Similarly, it was understood that a six-sided shape like this would be harmonious for the water. If you wanted to maintain the water quality coming up from the earth, if you put it in a harmonious shape, a shape that it's attracted to, of course that water is going to stay healthier longer. Today we forget that water is healthy or not healthy. Here's the biggest reason we forget. Because all bottled water is cooked water. Every bottle of water has been cooked in some way. And we forget that water loses freshness because our water never loses freshness. It either comes with chlorine in it or it's been cooked so that life forms don't grow in it. Natural water has life forms that grow in it. And if you opened up your bottled water and there was algae in it, you'd think that, wow, my water went bad. Well, water does do that. Natural water will do that. Water that's been cooked with ultraviolet or with heat or has had a toxic antibiotic like chlorine put into it doesn't grow anything so we don't know it loses freshness. Well, these people 120 years ago did know that because they didn't use those technologies for their water. So when they found a source like this that stayed fresh a long time, they knew it was something special, and they constructed it in this way to maintain its freshness, to create a harmonious environment as like an act of reverence or sacredness towards the water. That eventually, the water that of course eventually became their blood. And this water we're going to drink, and Matt, in 10 minutes this water is going to be in your blood. Nice. Your blood will be made out of this water. Remember that the water you drink instantly becomes your blood. It's absorbed through your membranes in your intestine and stomach and instantly becomes your blood. So if it's going to instantly become your blood, what water do you want to make your blood out of? The best. Exactly, the best. So would that be cooked water? Of course not. Would that be, would that be water with chlorine in it? Of course not. Would that be filtered water? It might be, but are there better options? There might be. There might be. Just like the, the fruit out of nature is better than the fruit out of the farm, the water out of nature is wild. So this is wild water. Water through a filter is like a domesticated water or a processed water. So we talk about processed foods. Well, there's processed waters, but we haven't thought in that way. We've been very focused on foods and we forgot that we were drinking processed water. In other words, we've been making our tissues out of all the solid foods we've been eating the whole time our bloodstream was made out of the liquids we were drinking and some of us haven't been thinking about that. So what if you took your raw food diet and you combined it with better water so that your blood that transports all that food around, that part of you that's 75% of you, most of you, 
made out of water? What if that water was wild water? Could there be another level of health and energy and vitality and wisdom that would come? Because most people experience raw foods making them more intelligent. Could there be a higher level of intelligence and could that come from turning that 75% of you from processed and domesticated water into wild water? It's possible. I think it's possible. I think it's true. Nice. So how, how do you know there's like no comp contamination in this water? Like where is it coming from? Like how do you know it's like pure and clean mm -hmm. with all the... Good qu okay, that's a great question. So where do springs come from? Springs originate from underground lakes called aquifers. Remember that if we dug into the ground here, eventually we're going to hit rock, and that's called bedrock. And that bedrock is very, very deep, right? It goes all the way down to the liquid magma. Well, in that, embedded in that bedrock, there are pockets called aquifers. These are underground lakes. It's where water is stored. It's the storage vessel of the earth. Water is stored in underground compartments called aquifers. Those sometimes, when they fill, penetrate their way up. Water defies gravity and comes to the surface as springs. Now, that water's been underground a long time. Some of that water's been underground for thousands of years, sometimes tens of thousands of years, which means the water's been underground way before industri industry and in, in the Industrial Revolution or before there was anything called pollution. Imagine if you could get water from a time before there was pollution. Wow. Where would that water be? It would have to either be frozen in glaciers or it would have to be from deep underground. That water from deep underground is often been there since before industry. And sometimes it is water that works its way down into those aquifers. But if you imagine, we're all pretty comfortable with the idea that if you take dirty water, put it into a plastic machine, and this <laughs> end, and it comes out two feet over here, on this end that it's clean, with right. all those filters. Yeah. <laughs> what if you had something that was the size of the earth, a giant megabot living organism, where water came down from the sky and penetrated all the way down through the soil, through the rootlets, through the bacteria and funguses that clean it, down through the soil, down through the sediment like the silts and the clays, which are detoxifiers, cleaning that water more, then down through the bedrock till it made its way down into the deep, dark, cold earth, maybe incubated for a couple of thousand years before coming to the surface again, how clean would it be? Right. This is the cleanest water in the world. Now, people will reach for a bottle of water, they don't ask, how do I know this water's safe? And they'd actually never even ask. They assume somebody's out there watchdogging, making sure it's safe, and that's not true. It's actually a gamble. Sometimes it's just tap water anyway. People turn on the tap, they drink the water, they don't ask, how do I know this isn't contaminated? This is actually the cleanest water. In fact, I realized the other day, I had this, this revelation, this really changed my, my thinking actually. I realized that cold spring water from deep in the earth is actually the cleanest thing I'll ever touch. Because for the rest of my life, everything I'm in contact with has been exposed to the air. And the air, as we see, has airplane pollution and car exhaust pollution. There's mercury and formaldehyde and all this sediment in the air. Stuff that we're all learning how to get out of our bodies. That's on everything. Even the natural plants, it's in the forest, it's in the lakes, it's in the ocean. Where is it not? Deep in the earth. So when the water comes up, it's actually the cleanest, purest thing you'll ever come in contact with. The exciting thing is that I realized, whoa, I could make 75% of my body out of the cleanest thing left on Earth. So that 75% of my body has never even come in contact with any toxic pollution. That really can't be said for our food. Even wild food, even our organic food, has been in contact with pollutants. Our water from this place and from places like this has never been in contact with pollution. Wow. I mean, I've been, I've been fed a lot of you know, information. I know Richard Schultz says there's no pure water on the planet and it's all polluted. You gotta use, get purified water and stuff. But after hearing Danny, I mean, Daniel, I can't argue, you can't argue with that. I mean, that's what I love about your work. It just makes complete common sense to me, and it's just... It is common sense, but what we were talking about before, it becomes uncommon. In a place where, where there's almost, where everyone's gone mad or is uneducated, then common sense can be frightening, because people will say, you're talking about drinking water from out of the ground? Like water that's touched the dirt? Very scary to people. They forget that all the water does actually come from the ground anyway. So, you know, people... Thanks for joining us. See you again at the Raw Food World.